The purpose of this video is to give you a step-by-step -step process to help you to prepare to write an essay. While this might be helpful for any kind of essay, contextually this video is being made for students who are studying uh, Medea by Euripides in Victoria, Australia, um, who are undertaking the Victorian Certificate of Education Unit 3, the outcome being reading and creating. To provide a bit more context, I've actually devised this process as a result of a bit of research and looking into this thinking routine called Generate, Sort, Connect and Elaborate. And this has been devised by uh, the Visible Thinking uh, section of Project Zero, which is a part or a project um, started by the Harvard Graduate School of Education. It's a thinking routine that can be applied to many different aspects of learning. But I find it quite useful in terms of helping students to uh, thoughtfully think through an essay topic and preparing to write on it. So back to the PowerPoint. Now there are seven steps which may seem a bit excessive to some, but the point of having this many steps is to train students to become a bit more thoughtful, a bit more careful and a bit more thorough. I find that commonly students will make the mistake of, re uh, of writing a whole 800 or 1000 word essay and at the end I'll often have a comment, uh, at least one comment made in the essay being, um, does this actually answer the question or respond to the topic? So it's a way of helping students to make sure that what they actually write on the material that they use to write the essay is actually relevant to the topic itself. And that's why there are this many steps. This may take a bit of getting used to, but I think the more that one practices, uh, the more automatic it becomes. So the first step is to define the topic. So to define the keywords and phrases in the topic, which is extremely important, um, because if you don't do that, then you're not going to know what the topic is asking you to write on. Now, it's not asking you for dictionary definitions per se, but what the words might mean in the context of the novel, play, film, or whatever you are studying. For example, civilized men in the play Medea are quite different to civilized men in general society. The civilized men in Greek, ancient Greek society um, hold quite different values and beliefs to ones in civilized society today, to some extent. So the purpose of defining the topic is, again, to clarify what the topic is asking. And this also involves um, clarifying whether you are being asked to discuss something, whether you are being uh, asked to agree or disagree, or explain the extent to which you um, agree or disagree. So the next step is to rewrite the topic. And I find this to be a really helpful step because it makes use of what you've done in the previous step. And uh, you're able to put it in a manner that is visually a bit easier to grasp. So you can either rewrite the topic as a statement or a question. Personally, I prefer rewriting it as a question because, generally speaking, responding to a question is a bit more straightforward than responding to a statement. I also find that students sometimes get caught up with concrete statements, feeling like they either have to agree with it or they have to uh, just focus on that statement itself. But if you reframe it as a question, it can actually open up an avenue where you can explore more questions that are relevant and actually could take you to more interesting aspects of the topic rather than just sticking to what might be really obvious or conventional there. Okay, step three is generate. So this is where the thinking routine comes in handy. So ideally at this stage, you should understand the topic and what it's asking you to do. If not, then you're not really prepared to write the essay yet. In fact, you might need to go back and you might need to um, reread the text, um, spend some time getting to know it a bit more. Obviously, that would be uh, more possible or more feasible for those of you who are um, writing practice pieces. Perhaps not so much um, if you're watching this the morning before an exam or a SAC per se student assess coursework. So now that you've clarified what the essay topic is about, now it's time to generate ideas and examples. So obviously you have some knowledge of the text, hopefully. Um, by that, 
we, uh, I mean, characters, setting, relationships, values, and beliefs, you know, the common elements of a plot or a story um, that the author will use or the playwright will use to construct the world of the text. So you need to think about what ideas or examples can be used to respond to the topic. Once you've done that, now you have to sort it. Now this requires some critical thinking and it can actually be quite a fun process because you have to actively justify um, why you've chosen these ideas and examples. So the point of this um, step is to organize your ideas and examples in terms of relevance and importance. The closer to the topic, the more relevant. So what I like to do is to have an A3 sheet of paper, or an A4, whatever you prefer, write the topic in the middle of the page, and you generate your ideas, um, or you sort your ideas around the topic. The closer um, your ideas or examples are to the topic, the more relevant you think they are. Now, obviously, you don't want to do just this just randomly. You want to think about why some ideas are more relevant than others. Okay, so this is part of the thinking process before actually writing. Um, I find it's useful to use post-it notes or sticky notes for this so you, that you can move things around if you change your mind. The next step is connect. So obviously if you just leave things in the sort stage then it's quite a mess and you need to be able to think about how some of these ideas and examples are linked together because inevitably an essay is actually just a bunch of ideas that are that you have drawn connections between um, and that you uh, find some logical flow or create some logical flow between them. So this is a step where you need to think about how all of these um, ideas are connected to one another. And some things you might want to think about when you're connecting um, are which examples exemplify which ideas. So can one example exemplify more than one idea? Does this example exemplify the idea better than the other? That's where you can sort out um, what examples or evidence you might use for which idea. Do some ideas flow logically onto or from others? You might have, as here, four ideas. You need to think about how they flow logically. Right? In any kind of um, essay where you are being marked on structure, you do need to think about how your ideas are flowing. And can some be combined? So for example, you've got idea one that seems to be less relevant to the topic, but perhaps you could combine it with idea four to create a much more relevant top, um, idea, or perhaps an idea that is combined with a, a sub-idea or a subtopic, which can, which can actually bring out more depth. So again, the, the connect stage can be actually quite fun, because you can begin to see the links between um, your thinking, rather than keeping it all in your head, which is actually quite difficult. So the next step is to plan. Now, you actually have basically just planned everything out. But sometimes it's helpful to, after you have um, generated, sorted, and connected, to just put everything in a, in a lean, uh, linear form. So like a top-down list, um, which can often help to just visually make the um, planning or preparation of the essay a bit more um, appealing visually, and it's easier to refer to um, as you're actually writing instead of just a, a hodgepodge of things. Now it's up to you what you prefer, you can do a top-down list or you might just keep things as they are, it's up to you. Um, it's hard to prescribe exactly what's the best way to do it because it's up to the individual. And the last step is to form your contention. Now I know in a lot of case, uh, cases students tend to try and form their contention maybe in step 3 or step 4. I would advise against that because why would you want to form a stance um, or a point of view or an opinion or, on something without gathering enough information in the first place, right? Um, if you try to form your contention too early, you may be misinformed or you may have missed out on some key information that you might come back to later. So placing the contention at the end really um, sums up the heart of the uh, whole seven-step process. It's about being thoughtful and careful. And this can all take a long time, but it trains you to be thorough. Um, thorough in terms of your thinking, thorough in terms of your process as well. So we've just gone through the seven steps. Now I'm going to show you an example based on this essay topic, which is related again to the text, uh, the play Medea by the ancient Greek playwright Euripides. 
So the topic is the lesson of Medea is that civilized men ignore at their peril the world of instinct, emotion, and irrational experience. Discuss. Now here I've defined the topic. You may wish to pause the video just to look at this section here. Next, I've rewrite, uh, rewritten, not rewritten, rewritten uh, the topic as a question using some of the terms that I've defined above. Um, now, as you can see here, I've actually questioned the topic a bit further. Does Medea actually teach us this, or does it actually teach us something different? Right, this is where actually reframing it as a question has helped me to question the question per se. Okay, now I've generated quite a few ideas here. I'm not going to talk through all of them because it's a waste of time for you who are not studying Medea. Um, but you may choose to pause the video to have a look at these ideas that I've generated. Now, they're deliberately quite roughly written. Reason is because I don't need to think about making it um, all that concise right now. And because I haven't uh, brainstormed on this Word document, I've lumped steps four, five, and six together. So again, pause the video to look through at your own pace. Okay, so with some of these ideas, they're actually a combination of um, a few from the generate step. And some of these examples as well, I've put in dot points under these ideas. Right, so I haven't used everything from the uh, generate section. I've just picked things that I think are most relevant. And then finally, I've got my contention here. Euripides teaches many lessons through the way civilized men treat the world of passion. These include a warning against the pride and ignorance that stems from cold rationality, advising against succumbing to a mode of persuasion, and that harmony in society is achieved by a balance between passion and rationality, not one above the other. Um, I think it's a mistake to assume that a contention has to just be one sentence or statement. Um, quite often, um, it's possible to have a contention that is expressed in more than one sentence, the principle of it is just to make your sense clear. So I think this, uh, these two sentences uh, make it pretty clear what my stance on the essay topic is. Um, hope this video has been helpful, and please feel free to pause and rewind to sections um, that you need to rewatch.